Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in on this beautiful Wednesday morning from Phuket. Now, before we do get started, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. But now that it's all done and dusted, let's jump into the top trending stories here in Thailand today. The Constitutional Court has stepped in, ordering the Attorney General to provide a report within 15 days on the progress of a petition against former Prime Minister Taksin Shinawat, accusing him of wielding undue influence over the Puatai Party. The petition, submitted by lawyer Tiriyot Suan Kisorn, raises concern about Taksin's influence on the government and its alignment with the constitutional monarchy. Now, on October 10th, Tyriot filed a comprehensive 5,080-page petition naming Taksin and the Puatai Party, led by his daughter Prime Minister Peitung Tarn Shinawat, as the first and second accused, respectively. Tyriot claims focus on Taksin's alleged use of political power to maintain his personal advantage and influence over the ruling party. Among the six accusations made, the petition claims Taxon used his connections to secure an extended stay at Police General Hospital instead of serving his prison term following a conviction related to abuse of power when he was ousted by a coup in 2006. Now, additionally, Tiriot accused Taxon of pushing the government to revive um, negotiations on sharing marine resources with Cambodia despite ongoing boundary disputes. He also claims that Taksin is behind a push to amend the constitution through an alliance with the People's Party, which emerged from the disbanded Move Forward Party, previously ruled by the Constitutional Court, to have endangered the monarchy. The petition further alleges that Taksin hosted discussions with coalition parties to select a successor to former Prime Minister Sareta Tavasin, who was dismissed for an ethics violation on August 4th. 14th. Now, Tyriot also contends that Puatai's government policy statements echo Taxon's public statements, uh, claiming the party's direction is under his control. Now, when the Attorney General failed to take action on the petition within the 15 required days, Tyriot took his concerns directly to the Constitutional Court, which has now set a deadline for the Attorney General to report on the case. Now, police in downtown Bangkok have arrested a group of Filipino pickpockets, marking the first time a gang from the Philippines has been caught in such operations in the city. On October 23rd, Tong Lo police apprehended seven suspects, five women and two men, at a hotel in downtown Bangkok. Evidence found at the scene included clothing worn during their thefts. Now, these suspects, identified as Miss Lourdes, Miss Ophelia, Miss Katrina, Miss Annalyn, Miss Joy, Mr. Brian, and Mr. Alid have been charged with nighttime theft, which carries penalties of one to seven years in prison, fines ranging from 20 to 140,000 baht, and compensation for stolen goods. Investigators launched a search after receiving reports of foreign pickpockets targeting the busy Sukhumvit ASOC business district, a hotspot for tourists. CCTV footage helped police track down the group, which were staying at a hotel in Bangkok. Upon raiding the room on October 21st, the police arrested the suspects and seized evidence linking them to multiple thefts. The group admitted to entering Thailand on tourist visa and confessed to targeting areas popular with foreigners, including the Tonglo area, known for its large number of Japanese and European tourists. Their methods involve surrounding victims to pickpocket them before transferring the stolen money to middlemen and planning their return home. The incident follows a pattern of foreign pickpocket gangs in the area, which previous arrests of criminals from Vietnam, Cambodia, Congo and China. Now, at least two victims have already filed police reports related to the recent thefts by the Filipino gangs. Now, with Bangkok being such a major tourist destination, what measures do you think could be put in place to protect visitors from pickpocketing gangs? Share your thoughts below in the comment section. In a tragic incident that underscores the ongoing plight of Rohingya migrants fleeing persecution in Myanmar's Rakhine state, 26 Rohingya were smuggled by human traffickers in a cramped box truck and abandoned in a forest in Thailand's Chumporn province. Sadly, three of the migrants died from suffocation during the perilous journey. On October 17, monks from the Wat Sek Haram discovered the weakened migrants in a thicket near the temple. 
with some convulsing and on the brink of death due to severe oxygen deprivation after being locked in the nearly airless truck for an extended period. The police were immediately alerted, but by the time they arrived, two of the migrants had already passed away. A third succumbed to injuries in the hospital, while six others were in critical condition and one remained in a coma. Fortunately, 16 of the survivors were found safe. Authorities launched an investigation and swiftly arrested two suspects involved in the trafficking operations, Mr. Pitek, 30, from Ratchaburi province, the truck driver, and Mr. Seksun, 21, from Samut Prakan province, the guide vehicle driver. The suspects were caught in Pechaburi province early on October 18th. Police have seized two vehicles used in the operation as evidence and are continuing to pursue a third suspect. Now, the investigation revealed that the human trafficking network spans across Myanmar and Thailand, with migrants paying up to 10 million kit, about 150,000 baht or $4,500 for the dangerous journey. The Rohingya, fleeing ongoing conflict in Myanmar, were seeking refuge in Malaysia, where many have relatives and hope to find better opportunities. The trafficking network coordinated the smuggling from Rakhine State through Thailand to Myanmar. Malaysia exploiting vulnerable people in desperate situations. The heartbreaking story of 26 migrants, especially the three who lost their lives, highlights the danger and desperation faced by the Rohingya as they seek safety. As authorities continue to crack down on human trafficking operations, questions remain about the root causes of these tragic migrations. What do you think needs to be done to address the root of this crisis and protect vulnerable migrants from such horrific exploitation? Share your thoughts and comments as always down below in the comment section. And finally, Chiang Mai police have apprehended a 21-year-old French national identified as Hugo after images of him recklessly riding a motorcycle up to Doi Sutep circulated online, sparking widespread criticism. The tourist police, in coordination with officers from the local police station, tracked down Hugo to his accommodation in Sutep subdistrict. There, they located both the motorcycle and the clothing he was wearing during the incident. During questioning, Hugo admitted that he had met with a group of motorcyclists at the Rincom Hotel intersection on the day of the event. They decided to ride up Doi Sutep together, intentionally performing reckless stunts to entertain friends. However, upon reaching the Doi Sutep area, they turned back due to low fuel. Hugo has been charged with driving without a license and reckless driving that endangered public safety. Police Lieutenant General Saxira, commander of the Tourist Police Bureau, expressed his concerns over the dangerous driving behavior of both tourists and locals, especially as the high tourist season approaches. So do you think stricter regulation should be implemented on people like Hugo for endangering other people and engaging in risky behavior like this? I'd love to know what you think about this as always and with all the stories today down in the comment section.